Welcome back to another clay video. Today, we are going to create every single type of Pokeball and put them into this frame and display them on the wall. If you've already seen both part one and two, this video might seem a little bit repetitive to you, but I thought it would be cool to combine both parts together with the added display frame at the end hanging on the wall. Now, since every Pokeball shares the same basic design, I thought it would be best to make the Pokeball first, and then I can just skip that process on all of the other ones. As I go through creating all of the Pokeballs, I will tell you what every single Pokeball does. So this is the basic Pokeball. It does absolutely nothing special, it's just used to catch Pokemon. We have this black strip going around it, and we can trim that in the back and put those pieces back together. Since this is going in the display frame and you won't even see the back of them, I don't go too crazy on the details of the back of the Pokeball. We have this black dot in the front with a white dot on top. Now, our Pokeball is complete, but it's very dirty, and I've had to do this with every Pokeball I made. I'm using some rubbing alcohol, you can also use isopropyl alcohol, and this works very good to clean up your Pokeball. The Fast Ball is more likely to succeed catching a Pokemon that is fast or quick to flee. This Pokeball has a pretty cool design on it, and on the top of it, we'll have to create this more simple version of Pikachu's tail. Let's remove the excess clay, and we can place that right onto the front of the Pokeball. Moving on, we have the Sport Ball. This Pokeball can be used to catch wild Pokemon during a bug catching contest. This Pokeball seems to have a couple different designs, the S and also this target, but I like this target design more. Now we have the Great Ball, and what makes this Pokeball great is that it has a higher chance than a regular Pokeball of catching Pokemon. The Cherish Ball is one of those Pokeballs I've never heard of before, but it says event Pokemon are usually distributed inside of a Cherish Ball. We have these little worms of clay on the side, and then on the front we have the typical dot. And we can move on to our next Pokeball, which is the Heavy Ball. This one is pretty unique because it's more likely to succeed at catching Pokemon the heavier they are so it would be great against Pokemon like Snorlax. Next, we have the Ultra Ball. This is basically an upgraded version of the Great Ball. It has a double catch rate compared to a normal Pokeball. The Premier Ball is a rare Pokeball made in commemoration of some event. The times I've gotten it is from spending a lot of money at the shop, and they gave it to me as basically a gift. I didn't actually know you could use this to catch Pokemon though, I thought it was just like a collector item. Next we have the Dive Ball. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed in water encounters. It was a little hard to figure out at first how to make this Pokeball, but I think if we take this dark blue splat and put it on the bottom, it will look pretty good. We also have a white one on the top. And using a little bit of the Pokeball color, we need to place this little dot on the top. And now we make the wrapping around the Pokeball. And we can move on to our next Pokeball. When a Pokemon is caught in the Friend Ball, it instantly becomes more friendly. I think the design on this Pokeball is really cool. It has a pattern like a peacock or a turkey, some type of bird with a fan in the back. Moving on, we have the Nest Ball. This one gave me a little bit of trouble with the ring on the top. It got a little bit messy, but I think it looks pretty good. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed against lower-leveled Pokemon. 
Let's take some more of this yellow and wrap it around the bottom for the bottom stripe. And we can move on to our next Pokeball. We have the Safari Ball. This was probably the hardest of all the Pokeballs to make. It has this crazy camouflage pattern on the top. So I'm making all of these random splats, and hopefully if we layer these all on top of each other, it will look like a nice camouflage. This Pokeball is unique because it can only be used to catch wild Pokemon during a Safari game. Let's take all of these different splats and start layering them on top of each other. And I know that they sit on top of the Pokeball a little bit high, they're not very flat, but I think this is the best you can do if you're not going to be using paint. And it's a little bit empty in the front, I think, so let's use a little bit more of the tan. And that looks pretty good, so let's move on to the Master Ball. This is one of my favorite Pokeballs. I really love the purple on it. I think it really makes it stand out much more than all of the other Pokeballs. And what's very unique about this Pokeball is that it can catch Pokemon without failing. And I believe this also works against legendary Pokemon. So if you're ever going to try to catch a legendary, use a Master Ball. We have these two little pink blobs, one on each side. And let's move on to a Pokeball that I've never heard of before. This is the Dusk Ball. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed if used at night or in a cave. The part of the cave doesn't make much sense to me, because it's not nighttime. If you were to use this in a room and turned off the lights, would that make it more likely to succeed? Or do you have to be in a cave? Either way, I think it's a pretty strange design for a Pokeball. Now we have this orange wrapping around it, and I think that this one was probably my messiest Pokeball out of all of them. These green dots were really hard to keep rounded. Let's move on to another one of my favorites, the Luxury Ball. I really love the design on this Pokeball. It just looks so fancy and expensive. Now this one is very similar to the Friend Ball, where you instantly get friendship. But this one actually makes your Pokeball gain friendship more quickly. So it's sort of the same effect, but a little bit different. Our next Pokeball is the Level Ball. The thing that makes the Level Ball very unique is that you're more likely to succeed at catching a Pokemon the higher leveled your Pokemon is above the one that you're catching. Let's take this red V and stick it on the front of it. And let's move on to our next Pokeball. This is the Love Ball. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed against Pokemon of the opposite gender to the one that you're currently using. We need to create this heart on the front. We have a white outline going around it. And let's place this little dash in the middle and put it on the Pokeball. And we can move on to our next Pokeball, the Dream Ball. It says it can be used to catch Pokemon in the Entry Forest, and I'm not sure what that is, but it also says it's more likely to succeed when used on a sleeping Pokemon. Very similar to the Dive Ball, we have this little splat on the bottom. And let's move on to the Quick Ball. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed if used at the very start of a battle. We have these yellow wrappings that go around the ball in an X shape. Let's cut out a little diamond in the center. And we can replace that with a little diamond here. And a trick that I learned to making diamonds is just to make a square and turn it sideways. Now that might be really obvious to some people, but to me it took me a while with clay projects to figure this out. Moving on, we have possibly the most complicated design of a Pokeball, the Beast Ball. This one can be used to catch Ultra Beast. You can also catch other Pokemon with it, but the chance is really low, so there's not much of a point of using this. I was kind of dreading making this Pokeball because I thought it was going to be extremely messy using little worms of clay. I really don't think it would have worked out, so I decided to go for this paint marker, and I think that it worked out pretty well. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it would have looked with clay. 
Let's take some yellow clay to make these little pieces that go around the Pokeball. They sort of look like bananas. And we'll get them into the right shape we need, and then we can bake them and glue them on. I just bake these little bananas for 5 minutes since they're so small, they don't take much baking time to get hard. Let's use some super glue and attach these onto it. And I think after adding these on it looks a lot better and you don't really see the messy lines from the marker as much. Any Pokemon caught by the heal ball is instantly healed to full health, which can be pretty nice if you want to use that Pokemon you just caught and don't want to travel anywhere or use any items to heal it. This one is pretty basic in design, we just have to finish this blue wrapping and the typical dot in the front. I don't really know what the PAL Park is, but this Pokeball can be used to re-catch Pokemon that have migrated to PAL Park. It's also one of the easiest Pokeballs to create. The Moon Ball. This one took a little bit of thinking to try to figure out how to make this top pattern, but I think this should work out pretty good. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed against Pokemon that evolved by using a Moonstone. It's a very oddly specific Pokeball, and I don't think you would use it very often, but it's nice to have some variety. We have to create a little moon on the top. And let's move on to our next Pokeball. The Timer Ball is basically the exact opposite of the Quick Ball. This one is more likely to succeed the longer you've been in the battle. We have some little red triangles on the side. And on the top we have this little strip that really reminds me of a mohawk. Moving on we have the repeat ball. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed if the Pokemon is already registered as caught in the trainer's Pokedex. To me this seems like sort of a pointless Pokeball, I can't imagine you would use it very often. But like I said before, it's nice to have a little bit of variety. Now we have another one of my favorites in design. This is the Netball. This is more likely to succeed against a water and bug type Pokemon. I really love this net pattern on the top of the ball. And I think it makes it look much more unique than a lot of the other Pokeballs. The Lure Ball is used for exactly what it sounds like. This Pokeball is more likely to succeed in fishing encounters. We have this double diamond pattern on the top. We also have these three yellow lines. And I imagine these are also on the back diamond, but I don't think it's as important to worry about the back of the Pokeball. Let's straighten up the lines on the diamond. That was our final Pokeball. So now, our Pokeballs are ready to get baked. Now that our Pokeballs are baked, we can get them ready to go into the frame. This is a frame I bought online from Ikea, and I will leave a link in the description to the exact frame that I'm using. Now as you can see this background won't work very well, so let's use some of this cardboard I got. This is backing made for picture frames, and I will link that in the description as well. We need to cut it to be the right size for the frame. And now we can remove the excess on the sides. And I guess I didn't really cut it deep enough because we had a lot of leftovers. But we can clean that up with a scissors. Now our cardboard backing is ready, so let's get that into the frame and close everything back up. And our frame is ready for the Pokeballs, so let's break out the hot glue gun. I feel like it's been a really long time since we've seen this on the channel. And let's start adding in all of the Pokeballs. 
I saw a picture on the Wikipedia of all of the different Pokeballs, so this is the pattern I'm going to be using for my frame. So finally, here it is! All 27 different types of Pokeballs inside of a frame. I hope you all enjoy the creation of these Pokeballs, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.